Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday. J.R. Fisher here. Love seeing all you guys here. Don't forget, before we get going on today's session, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there. Turn it from red to gray. Don't forget, ring the bell. Turn on all bell notifications so you're notified each and every time I go live or if I upload a video. Today's going to be exciting. Today's going to be fun. Today, we're going to talk about laziness. Yeah, who's ever been lazy? Put that in the chat section if you've ever been lazy. Uh, I know it's things that I experience. Um, no matter what I do, I have bouts of laziness. I know I do. And most of us do. It's okay. So the first thing I'm going to tell you today is don't freak out if you're being lazy. It's okay. It's okay if you're lazy, okay? Now, what we'd like to do is correct some of that. And that's what we're going to do in today's session. I've got nine simple steps. I mean, nine things, not hard to do. Uh, put in that chat section, guys. Have you been lazy? What is your opinion of lazy? What do you think lazy people are? Put something in there. Make sure you participate. Because if you don't, we're going to call you... No, we're not going to call you anything. But if you don't, you know what you're going to be thinking. Go ahead, put something in that comment section. If you're here, you might as well participate. You might as well get more out of it. I've got my microphone here. I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. So also put in that chat section if you can hear me or not. Um, that's super important because if you can't hear me, that's not good. But I think you can because I just had my volume up and I think I heard myself echoing back and forth through there. So what is laziness? You know, it was right before we got started, I was on my phone and I was looking for a definition that I liked. And I, I found a couple of them. Um, here's the first one here. The quality of being unwilling to work or use energy, idleness. That was too shallow for me. I wanted more definition. So I came across this one here. A person is being lazy if he, I like the, they got he in here. They don't have he or she. If he is able to carry out some activity that he ought to carry out, but is disinclined to do so because of the effort involved. So it's lack of wanting to put forth effort, I think, is, an, is the thing here. Uh, synonyms for laziness are indolence and sloth. Uh, indolence derives from Latin indolentina, uh, without pain or without taking trouble. So right off the bat, if we, if we look at laziness, it has to do with doing something we probably don't want to do. And the funniest story I was putting together today's session, and I was thinking about it throughout the day. And I knew I needed to send out some emails. I knew what I needed to post it. I knew I needed to do a thumbnail. And I kept putting it off. And I kept putting it off. And it was something I needed to do, right? And it was something I should do. And I was in the shower and I'm like, wait a second. I'm doing it right now. I'm being lazy. I'm not doing what I should be doing. I need to do it. Uh, I got some comments in here. What's the difference between laziness and procrastination? Wow, that's a good one. Procrastination really, I think, is a killer. I mean, a real killer. Uh, and we procrastinate, I think, because we're, tr we're telling ourselves we're perfectionists, so we want to do it right, when in fact we're actually procrastinating. So when you hear somebody say, well, I'm such a perfectionist, that's why I haven't gotten that done yet. What they're really saying is, I'm such a procrastinator, that's why I haven't done what I should do. Uh, but procrastination is putting things off. And I think they're very closely related. I really do. Um, and we're going to talk about why you do this to yourself uh, in just a second. Uh, I've, I've, I've got some notes here I want to share with you guys. I put some notes down here. And I think it's terribly interesting because here's the cool thing about anything that we don't like about ourselves. We have the ability to change it. We can change anything about ourselves. That's all we got to do is decide we want to make a change. Um, so laziness begets laziness. And what do I mean by that? Well, think about this. Let's say you're supposed to go to the gym and you don't go to the gym. And this happens for two or three days. And you finally say to yourself, why go to the gym? I haven't been in three days anyhow. So laziness begets laziness. If you keep being lazy, you will become even lazier. Um, and I don't want to pick on the hoarder show, but goodness gracious, have you ever watched the shows like on, I, I, can't, I can't think of the channels that are on now, but where the people will hoard things because they don't want to throw anything out. Uh, and generally, they aren't in the most fit shape, okay? You look at their bodies and you go, oh my gosh, they're overweight and they're a hoarder. Um, or they're sickly and they're a hoarder. Or their yard looks bad too. Here's the problem 
with laziness and anything that is a negative um, trait, it spills over into other areas of your life. You, you generally will not find somebody who eats perfectly, really takes care of their body and is in great shape and is a hoarder. OK, that doesn't happen because all of these things, guys, and this is why it's important to work on laziness. It will spill over into another part of your life. I mean, why take out the garbage if your entire house is a mess anyhow, right? So laziness begets laziness. And these are good points. You got to break the cycle. That's what we have to do is we have to break the cycle. And I was doing a uh, podcast yesterday, not my podcast. I was being interviewed uh, by uh, a friend of mine, Peter Anthony. And we got to talking about motivation and what motivation really is. Motivation is actually a feeling that comes out of success. Motivation is not something you get to go out and be successful because most of the things that I've ever done in my life are because I forced myself to do them and that helped me become successful. But I was not motivated to do it. I was not motivated to get up and do something. I just forced myself. And you've got to realize that laziness, procrastination, all these things that really destroy our life and our success are actually us what not wanting to do something that's uncomfortable we're gonna have to be uncomfortable so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna give you nine things you can do first off okay um a lot of people will say that you should tell yourself to work on that dreaded task for a designated period of time so number one i'm gonna tell you is to set an alarm find out whatever that task is i don't care if it's working in the yard I don't care if it's working in the garage. I don't care if it's cleaning up a room that you put off for years. I don't care if it's it's writing a book that you've always wanted to write. Set an alarm for 10 minutes and work on that thing for 10 minutes. That's it. 10 minutes. OK, see how much you can get done in 10 minutes. Usually it will get me motivated to actually once the timer goes off, I want to keep doing it. I want to keep doing it. If I'm working on a book, I'm working on a sales page, whatever. I don't go up oh, 10 minutes is up. I'm out of here. I generally will want to keep doing it, but you're only required to do it for 10 minutes, only 10 minutes. Uh, I've got a comment in here. Yum.ngo. I guess they're trying to promote something. And guys, please don't promote stuff in there unless you ask me because we will kick your butt off the channel. Okay. And then you will not be able to come back to the channel anymore. And besides that, you know, for anybody who is trying to do spam promotions on YouTube, they don't work. I'm telling you, they don't work. If you really want to learn how to make money online, watch some of my videos. I've done it. Okay. I've never seen anybody spam themselves into being super successful. So if you're doing spam, guys, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. And if YouTube catches you, they will ban you from the site. So, you know, if you're putting that kind of stuff out there, please don't, you know, I'll be kind the first time around, but after that, we'll just kick your butt off. Okay. Number two, number two, this is a good one. Leave yourself an easy task for the next day. Okay. So set yourself up for success. Okay. Um, you're more likely to procrastinate if it's a really big, hard thing ahead of me for the next day. So pick something easy. And then you're going to feel like tackling the hard things. Um, if you know that the problem won't take much time or won't take much effort to solve, you're probably going to do it. OK, so pick something that's easy for you to do to start off with. We've got to get to the tough stuff. We've got to get to the tough stuff, but pick something easy to start with. I always try to leave myself something easy first thing the next morning. OK, I find a programming bug and I see it's easy to fix or something on my sales page or email I need to send, whatever, for the next morning, okay? Um, if I need to uh, work on my book or whatever, you know, I say, well, why don't you just go ahead and put the titles for the chapters? Why don't you just go ahead and work on the cover or something along that, those lines? And then I find I want to do other things, okay? So find something easy for you to do the next day, and I think you're going to find it's a whole lot easier. The next one you're not going to like, you guys never like this one. I bring it up all the time, uh, but it's the thing that will actually keep you going. Number three is exercise, exercise. Okay. The importance of exercise for beating laziness is the first thing you do in the morning or, you know, what you always do after lunch. If you exercise guys, you're going to feel like doing more things. Exercising is not always fun. I do it. I do it on a regular basis. Sometimes I get lazy about it, but I don't fall into the trap of, oh my gosh, I missed my workout for two days. Heck with this week or, you know, heck with this month, or I'm just not going to do it anymore because I don't stick with it. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. 
you're going to have slips. There's going to be times when you can't exercise. Don't make those periods of times too long, but don't beat yourself up. And I think part of laziness and the bad thing about it is we beat ourselves up so much, guys. And don't do that. You don't need to do that. Um, and, and, you know, nobody really determines if you're lazy. You determine that. You determine if you're lazy or not. And, you know, we don't have to be lazy. It's not necessary. OK, uh, but it's something we got to work on. Let me get a sip here real quick. And guys, even if you're not watching this live, you can put comments in the comment section. I come back. I answer those comments. I talk to you guys. Uh, I love talking to you, as a matter of fact. So put that in there. Have you been lazy? OK, what do you what have you done to break laziness? Um, what do you consider laziness? Answer any of these questions for me in the chat section. You could do it now if you're live. You can put it in the comment section later on. Uh, but answer them because if you don't, we might call you. No, I'm not going to call you that. I'm not going to do it. Number four. Number four. Switch up your work environment. Now I'm really good about this. This is one I got. I got this down. Sometimes I work in my office. Sometimes I sit on my couch and work. Sometimes I go to a Starbucks. And I can tell you, pretty much any town I've ever lived in, I know where every Starbucks is. I know which ones have the right air conditioning. I know which ones have the better Wi-Fi because I go to all of them. And I do it because I want a different environment. I got to tell you, this has helped me so much over the years to switch up what I'm doing. When I was working a job, I literally would drive to work different ways. I would take different routes so that I had some variety so it didn't seem mundane to me. Sometimes the routes took longer, but that wasn't the point. The point to me was I wanted to see something different. So if you switch stuff up, um, if you find that you procrastinate constantly when you're home uh, and you want to be more productive, go to a library, go to a public space, go to a coffee shop. Um, if we have a choice, I prefer public spaces where people are working because they encourage me to do the same. OK, now, sometimes in Starbucks, you get the guy next to you that's playing a game the whole time. But that doesn't really encourage me to play a game because I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to waste my life playing games. Um, uh, recent research suggests that being around other people who are working hard can actually motivate you to work hard, too. That could potentially explain why we're inclined to log into Twitter when we're sitting in a coffee shop full of people who seem super focused. OK, because we feel like we should be doing something. We feel like we shouldn't just be sitting there now. A lot of lists, and this is not on my list, will tell you to get a mentor, tell you to get a mentor. Um, I can't say as I've ever had a mentor in my life. Um, and I, and I'm, that's not that I don't listen to some people and talk to some people, but I don't have somebody that takes me along the journey. Uh, and I think this is a big mistake for new entrepreneurs as they go out, they go, I got to find a mentor. That's the key to all is I got to have a mentor. And over the years, I've had so many people ask me to be their mentor. Uh, and I always say no. <laughs> um, and I say no, because if you need somebody to have you do stuff every day, you're not going to learn how to do it on your own. And the thing is, if you um, are trying to find a mentor, you can also use that for an excuse for not getting ahead. You can say, well, I haven't had a good mentor come along yet. So as soon as I get one, then I'm going to get X done. Or I'm going to write that book. I'm going to start that sales page. I'm going to start doing e-commerce. I just got to find the right mentor. No, you don't. It's not necessary to have a mentor. Uh, Roderick says, what's going on? Get obsessed about your project. When I'm obsessed, I get really focused. That is a very good point, Roderick. I don't know if I know you or not. Uh, I think you look new in here, but that's a very good point. Uh, listen to Roderick. <laughs> get obsessed about it. Make sure it's the one thing in your life you're going to do. You know, I've heard people and I've written a few books and I'm working on another one now, but I've heard so many people say, I've got this great idea for a book. I'm going to write it one day. Why don't you just go ahead and do it? Go ahead and do it. Don't mess around anymore. My number five is get dressed appropriately. Get dressed appropriately. Think about this. When you come home, let's say you work on a job and you're in an office. Um, when you come home, the first thing you do is you change your clothes, don't you? You get into a different mode. You put your sweats on. You put your pajamas on. You put your baggy gym shorts on. Whatever it is, you get into a different mode. If you dress that way every single day and you're working online, you know, and you never put on any clothes, you sit in your pajamas all day, you will not be as effective. Your clothing has a dramatic difference um, on your psychological being, okay? If, you know, if you can't find the energy uh, to, you know, futz around on Facebook and stop writing your projects and all that, consider changing out of those stained sweatpants. Get out of your pajamas, okay? If you dress differently, 
you will act differently it's a fact okay um get together some outfits that you feel make you look really classy business like whatever make a special point in the morning to get fully dressed get up and get dressed like you're going to a job because you are why would you slight yourself you know if you're working for yourself and you're working online why would you slight yourself and disrespect yourself by not getting dressed shoes and all the whole get up now we don't wear shoes in my house so i don't i don't do the shoes part uh, but if you're going out even if you don't go out get dressed you will get more done okay there's a fashion psychologist and i was reading her stuff the other day karen pine and what she said to forbes was when we put on an item of clothing it is common for the wearer to adopt the characteristics associated with the garment a lot of clothing has symbolic meaning for us whether it's professional work attire or relaxing weekend gear okay so when we put it on we prime our brain to behave in ways consistent with that meaning okay it's just a fact guys um like if i'm going to the gym i put on gym clothes in the morning it reminds me i've got to go to the gym that day okay so you want to do that next thing which is number six write down the problems you're putting off facing just write them down put them in writing uh, i've done this and do do it right now procrastination starts with avoiding to think about the problem awaiting for you okay before you get your work energy up stop and think about the problems the details put them on paper make a list a graph whatever you like to describe it let's say also and i, I want you to also write down the results of doing those things because that's very important if you're going to write a book, think about why you're writing the book. You know, is it to educate people? Is it to get your thoughts out? Is it to make yourself famous? Whatever it is, think about the results of writing the book before you sit down to write the book. What are the results? What, what point do you want to get to? Setting that up in your brain is going to help you work on that thing because instead of just working on something, you're working on a success end, right? What's going to be at the end of this thing? What is what's going to happen at the end that's going to make you successful? You know, maybe you'll realize the problems aren't as big as you imagined, okay? Once you write them down, or that you could break them down into smaller chunks. When I do the book, that's what I always do break it down into smaller chunks. It'll be a whole lot easier to get started and track them, okay? Uh, Oscar winning Pixar director Pete Docker uses this trick to turn overwhelming tasks into something more manageable. So he says this usually, soon into the making of the list, I can group most of the issues into three or two larger all-encompassing problems so it's really not all that bad having a finite list of problems is much better than having an illogical feeling that everything is wrong he told pixar president ed catmull in creativity inc there's something to learn from that guys there's something to learn from that if you've had problems with this once again put it in the comments put it in the chat section how did you overcome some of these things i also want to know that and i didn't mention it but hang on do me a favor and give me a thumbs up on this video it means a whole lot if you click that little thumbs up thing there that means a whole lot to me so please please do that okay the next thing number seven do the thing you're thinking about do the thing you're thinking about the best advice i've ever seen is when you catch yourself thinking about something you should be doing but aren't you just get up and do it okay it's it's the five second rule you count down backwards from five to one when you hit one you just do it whatever it is um and it, this works so well uh, mel robbins did a really good ted talk on the five second rule so you can look her up mel robbins um and matter of fact she wrote a whole book about it i read you think well how can you write a whole book about five seconds believe me you can she shared some really cool stories in there so do that thing you're thinking about um, and and I, I try to institute this all the time when, you know, my wife and I are talking about something. I'll say, well, let's just go ahead and do it right now. Let's just go ahead and do it. You know, instead of talking about it, instead of thinking about it. And the other thing it does when you start putting things off like this, it clutters your mind. You've got all these things that are you, you're going to do uh, next week, next Monday, next Friday. If you start doing them, your mind gets freed up. And if your mind's freed up, you're going to be more creative and you'll come up with more cool things if your mind isn't all cluttered with all the things that you have to do. So that's another way to get around this. Um, number eight is follow the two-minute rule. I love this one. I love, 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 love this one. Uh, it's called the two-minute rule. If it takes less than two minutes to do, just do it. Less than two minutes, 
just do it this might include I don't know washing your dishes you know after your meal picking up your laundry off the floor anything that takes less than two minutes just do it do it right now um, if I see an email that I know I need to take care of I just go ahead and take care of it um, I don't generally take all the mail that I get for the week and pile it on the counter and wait for a Friday or Thursday to open it I open it right away I throw away what I need to throw away right away and I didn't always do this guys and I keep what I want to keep and the rest goes away and if I don't need to keep a copy of it I don't keep a copy of it I used to do that I used to keep tons of copies of stuff now I've got a small pile now I've got to go through uh, but I'm whittling that down. Okay. I gotta, I gotta work on that pile. So you just reminded me of that you guys, you reminded me of that. Okay. So that's something you got to do too. Don't wait. If it takes less than two minutes, guys, just go ahead and do it. Super important that you do that. Um, and I'm here to tell you, you're not lazy. You're not lazy. And I'm getting to number nine in just a second. You're not lazy. You're just acting that way. You're just acting that way. If it's something you can change, then that is not inherent in your makeup. Anything that is in your makeup, anything that's in your psyche, anything that's a habit of yours, you have the ability to change. And as soon as you realize I am not that thing, that's just what I'm doing right now. I'm not a lazy person right now. I'm just procrastinating. I'm going to move on and get these things taken care of. I'm not a lazy person. And it doesn't matter what other people's opinions are of you. You know, they can think you're lazy if they want, but if you're not lazy, the best way to prove it to them is not to be lazy. The best way to prove to somebody is to actually do something. And I'm going to add something to this. We all have 24 hours a day, provided you make it through the day. We all have 24 hours a day. You're doing something all day long. Okay. So let's say you wanted to work on, you know, sending out uh, emails to your list, but instead you played video games. Instead, you watched Netflix, but you knew you had to send out the emails. Now, what you've done is you've chosen to do something that brings you some immediate satisfaction as opposed to do something that was difficult, but it's going to bring you some long term satisfaction. So when you're thinking about these things you want to do, realize that a lot of times when you're not doing them, it's because you're seeking out immediate satisfaction. You know, if you watch a TV show, you can immediately watch somebody else live their life instead of you actually living your life. OK, and the way you're going to live your life is do these tasks that you need to do. But in the long run, when you do these tasks you need to do, you're going to get more out of it than you would have that TV show. So you've got to do that, guys. You've got to realize that you're, you're not lazy. It's just the way you're acting right now because you're choosing things with immediate satisfaction. Now, let's get to number nine real quick. Number nine, super important. Don't break the chain. Don't break the chain, okay? Use the calendar trick. Um, there was a, a actor and comedian, Jerry Seinfeld, and he uses this to motivate himself, okay? Every day he gets his writing done, he puts a big X on that day of the calendar. That's what Jerry Seinfeld does. He puts an X on the calendar, and he says he writes every day. After a few days, he has a nice chain with his only job is to not break the chain. And Jerry Seinfeld talked about that. And I thought it was very interesting. Don't break the chain. Once you see it in front of you and you say, well, I can remember if I did something yesterday or not. No, you can't. No, you can't. And it's not as motivational either. If you actually have this chain set up, if you actually see these X's and they're all leading towards success, you're a whole lot more likely to continue doing it than if you just try to remember it. We need to see visual things. People talk in words, but they think in pictures 100% of the time. If I say to you right now, do not think of a yellow fox driving a car. Don't think of a yellow fox driving a car. Now, what you probably just saw is a yellow fox behind the wheel of a car. What a crazy thing to think of. But the reason you thought of it is because you just pictured it. You saw that picture in your mind, didn't you? The yellow fox. Maybe he's got his arm out the window. He's driving the car with one hand on the steering wheel. Okay. Um, and I made you um, visualize that picture because I wanted to point something out to you. We talk in words, but we so often think in pictures. So seeing something visually, whether it's X's on a calendar or you writing out your goals or things that you wanted to do are going to help you so very much because just talk is just talk. Talk is not descriptive. Words are very clumsy ways to describe things. I mean, I could I could write a paragraph out of a description and two people could picture two different things. But if I hold a picture up, 
they're going to think the same thing because they're going to see the picture. Okay. You've got to have that picture in front of you. You've got to have that picture of success in front of you. Every one of you can do this. There is nobody better at one thing than another. They just force themselves to do it. That's it. As a matter of fact, I read a survey the other day, which I thought was incredibly interesting. Um, it wasn't a survey. I take that back. It was an article. I said survey. Um, but it was about brain surgeons and it was about rocket scientists. And they looked at the IQs of brain surgeons and rocket scientists. And here's something really interesting that they found. Their IQ, intelligent quotient, was no greater, no higher than the average human being. It was no greater, no higher. So when people say, well, oh, he's a rocket scientist, he's really smart. No, he's not. He is the same as everybody else. What he did, what she did, is they put their effort into a thing. So don't think that you need to have some super talent, some super knowledge, some, you know, something going on in your brain that nobody else does or, or that, you know, your brain operates better than everybody else's because that's just not the case. That's not the case, guys. The case is those people actually just did something. Um, and I, I love to watch Elon Musk interviews. I don't know if you uh, ever watched his interviews, but put, put it in the comments there. Um, it's just amazing how he thinks about things. It's amazing how he's always working on something. Paul, you finally showed up. Where have you been, man? Uh, he says, thanks for sharing this information today. Hope everyone has a blessed and merry Christmas gang. Uh, do you keep a chart in front of you to keep you on track? I use a thing called Keep, Google Keep. Um, and in Google Keep, I have different folders. I have ones for my book in there. I have ones for the grocery store. I have ones for things we're working on our house on. Um, so that's where I do it. I'm not real good actually physically writing things down. Uh, but I put them somewhere and I have them and I can pull it up and I can look at it. Um, I have my wife's goals in there. You know, she's working on a book and I can see what she's working on and she'll check off stuff and I'll check off stuff. Um, and we both need to get on each other because we're both writing a book and we haven't done much in the past week. But it's the holidays, whatever. Um, ability to focus is a huge talent. Um, it is. And I, I tell you, I don't have that talent. I don't have the talent to focus. Um, I, I When I was in school, I never really paid attention and you know, I screwed off a lot and didn't want to do a lot of the work. Uh, and I guess nowadays they would call me ADHD because my mind goes in so many different directions. Now, I don't necessarily think that's bad, but I have to force myself to stay on a path. OK, some people can stay on a path very well and they can operate on that path and they don't deviate from that. Their mind doesn't go in different directions. But that's not an excuse for me not to do these things. Because you have a problem, because it's harder for you. I mean, I, I listened to Damon John. As a matter of fact, uh, my wife met him and got her picture with Damon John. But he he has uh, dyslexia. He has a very hard time writing and reading and understanding things. That didn't stop him from becoming a billionaire. Okay, it didn't stop him at all. He just knew he had to work harder in those areas. That's all that is. David Goggins was the same way. He was terrible at math. He was terrible at studying. If you don't know who David Goggins is, you got to look him up. Uh, and yet he became a Navy SEAL. He became an Army Ranger. He set all kinds of records. He, he set the um, World Guinness record for pull-ups. He, right, um, was dyslexic. He had a hard time. He just knew that he had to work harder. Okay, it's not like you can't do these things. You know, what took, he said, what took, you know, one person 30 minutes to study, he may have to study for four hours. But the point was, he was just going to do it anyhow. It didn't really matter. You just got to do these things. Um, I actually keep a chart. So I look at it and physically check stuff off. I like that idea. I like that idea. Um, and here's the truth, guys. Whatever works for you, whatever works for you, you don't have to do things exactly like I do. You don't have to use Google Keep. Okay, I like to use Google Keep. That's what I like to do. Paul likes to write things down on a chart. Okay, um, so, you know, Mary may want to do something else, but we all can do this. We just got to figure out what works for us. But we got to do something. We can't put it off because then they'll call us lazy. We don't want that. Um, I think when there is no urgency, people tend to slack off. Putting a timeline and accountability process helps. 100%. And I didn't mention that, but I will mention it now. Don't give yourself forever to do things or it'll never get done. Now, listen to that again. Don't give yourself forever to do something or it'll never get done. Okay. I see that happen so much. I have a, a sister who's very intelligent um, and she's very well read and 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 knows a lot of stuff, and she's going to write a book one day. Um, she's in her 60s now. She's been talking about that since she's been in her 20s. Um, I've written a few books, uh, and she's been critical of them. Uh, and I always think it's funny because she's critical of something that she hasn't even done. 
mine aren't perfect maybe she's worried that hers need to be perfect and if that's the case guess what she'll never write one because it won't be perfect it won't be um i make mistakes it's okay i make mistakes all the time i put them out there uh, i have a cooking channel and, and paul by the way i have another uh, recipe that's going to go up i'm going to be editing that over the next day or so um but um it's not perfect i know when i do recipes it's not perfect people you know will tell me i've done stuff wrong or it, it didn't taste right or whatever it is i don't care I just want to get stuff done and if you want to get stuff done guys go through this list of nine things i gave you make sure you go through this list guys it will help you out i promise you you know and, and start with even if it seems overwhelming maybe maybe you're out of shape uh, maybe you're unhealthy maybe your house is messy maybe you don't have much money whatever it is start on one of these things that effort will spill over into so many other disciplines in your life you won't believe it because the fact is, if you are unhealthy and you're overweight and your house is messy and you don't have a lot of money, those things have already spilled over into other disciplines, haven't they? They have. Because you didn't clean your house, maybe you didn't care about your weight. Because you didn't go to the gym, maybe you didn't care about working hard on your job or your business. These disciplines spill over. They 100% do. Nobody can convince me they don't. Uh, let's see. Uh, what's next? on the cooking channel uh bought my crab meat yesterday to make some stuffed mushrooms awesome uh, the one we have coming up paul is a homemade caesar salad it's already been filmed i i did homemade croutons um and it's incredible we've i've been making this recipe for literally oh my gosh 30 years or more uh and i've tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it and tweaked it to where I think it's one of the best Caesar salads. You know, when we go out to a restaurant, uh, we can't get this salad like this, uh, but it takes a lot of time and effort, but it's a great salad. And I think you'll enjoy it. So that's going to be the next one on the channel. I'll have that up real soon. Um, I also yesterday bought a new microphone. Well, actually I bought it a few days ago, it just came yesterday and it's a little clip on one so that when I'm doing uh, and, and it, it sends a signal to my iPhone because I love my iPhone. Now the camera on there is great. But it sends a signal to it so i don't have a long cord right now i have this long cord and i'm dragging it around the kitchen and catching it on handles on drawers and it's pulling me over it's it's, it's a joke really i wish you could see that i won't put that in the video though um 70 of uh, imperfect plan executed is better than a perfect plan never executed perfection is best left to god michael j fox wow that's pretty powerful isn't it uh it, at least if you do something uh, yeah, thank you, Paul. I'm, I'm glad I've got the microphone like right here in my face. You can't see it because it blends in with my shirt, but it's like right here. Uh, the microphone's right there. Um, now, reward yourself. I've been working hard on a lot of things. Um, so I told my wife this morning, I said, well, you know, we, we've we lived here five months going on six months and we haven't done anything. We haven't gone anywhere. All we've done is work. So today and maybe tonight, uh, we're going to go around and just drive around and look at some things and see, see what's around us. Just go for a drive, put the dog in the car, bring her along with us and just enjoy ourselves. So give yourself a reward. Don't reward yourself every single day. OK, don't, don't say, well, every single day I can give myself a reward. No, you got to work towards it. It's got to be something really special. My son is a bodybuilder and he does uh, meal planning. And I mean, very specific meal planning. And when he does that. Um, he stays in shape, you know, he's only allowed to eat a certain number of calories or he has to eat a certain number of calories, depending on if he's bulking or cutting. But then once a week or once every two weeks, he goes out and overeats in sushi or whatever he wants or barbecue or steak or whatever it is. And he'll eat a ton of food. That's his reward. But 99% of the time he does it right. OK, so that's all you got. It's not like you'll never have a reward again. You're going to get your reward. You just don't get rewarded every single day. OK, so that's my nine things. I hope it helps you out. I probably will not see you guys until after the weekend. Um, we have relatives coming over and I've got to do a lot of cooking, of which I'll probably film some of that. That would be a good idea. Right. Um, but um i won't see you till next week but next week um, we're going to be hitting it real hard uh, i've got some great videos that are coming out on the channel stay tuned to the channel they come out monday wednesday and friday so you're going to see those videos also um let's see here hope you and your whole family has a great christmas you too paul uh hope grandkids have a blessed holiday same to you and i don't know if you have grandkids or not um but um yeah that makes you feel old doesn't it <laughs> first time you're called papa or grandpa um but anyhow that's what I got for you today, guys. I appreciate you showing up. If you didn't see this live, if you're seeing a recording of this, 
please, please, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, I am like, I don't know, 70 or 80 people away from 6,000 right now. And I remember just months ago, we were trying to get to 5,000 and you guys really helped me out, helped me get to 5,000 subscribers. Um, so we'll be at 6,000. If you subscribe, okay, if you if you hit that big red button down there, click subscribe, turn on your bell notifications so that every time I upload a video or I go live, you're going to be notified about that. Um, so please, please, please do that. Thank you so much for being here. Love each and every one of you. Stay in touch with me on the channel. Put some comments there. I'll be answering those all week long. Love talking to you guys. Love each and every one of you guys. Hope this helped you out. If it did, give me a thumbs up and share with friends, Paul says. Yes, if you've got a friend who thinks this may be beneficial to them or a family member, share it with them, okay? Uh, don't beat yourself up over being lazy. It's just what you're doing right now. It's not who you are. Thanks so much for listening.